What's up guys and welcome to the next Cracker Pack episode. Today we are opening up, I believe for the second time, a pack of 10th edition. Uh, I really enjoy this set. One of the newest reprints from, uh, oh my goodness, the newest core set, thank you, 2019, uh, is Crucible of Worlds, sitting at the top of the value list, right under $40. Uh, next in line is actually an uncommon uh, from the new uh, Hollow One deck in Modern. Uh, Goblin Lore sitting at $25. From there we have things like Grave Pack and Doubling Cube as well. So we will see what we get. We will of course be going through this as if we were in a pack one pick one scenario. Uh, so we'll determine hopefully what a decent first draft pick would be. Uh, hopefully give you some direction and just provide some extra information from these Cracker Packs that hopefully is useful to you guys. So we will go through every card and our first common here is a Spined Worm. It is a vanilla 5-4 for 5. Uh, this is actually a card I remember very well from 7th edition. I don't think it's actually terrible if it's like filler. I mean, it's a giant beater. Uh, definitely not something you necessarily want to first pick, but in a core set, not terrible. Uh, Heart of Light is an enchantment for two and a white. You enchant a creature, prevent all damage that will be dealt to and dealt by the enchanted creature. This is basically white removal. Uh, because what you can do is essentially throw this onto one of your opponent's creatures and then they basically don't deal damage with that creature in any way. Uh, so they can still, I guess, technically block, they just won't deal any damage. Um, but it does actually, it's pseudo removal. It's not amazing, but it's also probably not too bad. Uh, Afflict is two and a black for an instant. Target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn and draw a card. Uh, this is a little expensive for minus one, minus one, but you do get to draw a card off of it, which makes me think as a one of, this would not be bad in a draft deck. Uh, you'll probably find something to hit, uh, and if you don't, you can always basically cycle it late game. Uh, so I, I don't like this, but I don't think it's actually terrible. Uh, Avon Wind Reader is three and two blue for a three, three with flying. You can then pay one in a blue and target player reveals the top card of his or her library. Uh, I think this card's probably great in a blue-white flyer's shell. Uh, it's a 3-3 three, three for 5, which is a little pricey, but again, the flying really helps. And the fact that it's kind of a mana sink late game, uh, and you get to sort of get some information off of your opponent, uh, which I think is super, super useful. So I actually like that card quite a lot. Uh, Banalish Knight is a 2-2 two, two for 2 and a white. It has flash and first strike. This seems okay. Uh, I like that it has first strike. I think that makes it great. Flash is also pretty good because you can surprise people, but I generally don't bank on that too much. I don't think I like it more than the Wind Reader either, so I probably won't pick that above it. Uh, Begarden Fire Fiend is a 2-1 for 2 and a red. When it is put into the graveyard from play, it deals 2 damage to target creature. Uh, this is kind of a backwards... Uh, what it, the kuva that deals two damage i can't think of the name of it but it's a little backwards that uh when it dies it deals the damage uh i don't like that quite as much it's also not very powerful it's just a two one this is literally going to go out there to hopefully block something early and then probably just die to nerf two damage to a creature so i'm not a huge fan of that uh, Fire Breathing is a classic card. One red for an enchant creature. Uh, you can then pay one red as many times as you would like, and uh, enchanted creature gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. This card generally is actually not bad, just because you can kind of go over the top with it, but it does suffer from the same problem that all enchant creatures have. I say all, most enchant creatures have. Uh, the, it sort of opens yourself up for a two for one. You invest this in a creature, and if that creature dies, uh, which, let's be honest, if it has the enchant creature on it, it becomes a bit of a target. Uh, if it dies, you lose two cards for the price of one on your opponent's end. So it sort of opens yourself up. It's also useless if you don't have a creature out, which in limited is going to be rare. I mean, obviously, creatures are kind of the backbone for limited. Uh, but still, I tend not to value these too highly. Uh, Mind Rot is a sorcery for two and a black, another very classic card, and target player discards two cards. This is okay filler. Uh, it's not first pickable by any means, uh, but if you end up in a black deck and you just end up playing a Mind Rot, especially in a core set where things tend to be a little bit underpowered, uh, this really isn't terrible. Uh, it's going to be a slower format, so you're going to be able to discard a couple hopefully useless cards. Uh, it's worth noting they do get to pick those two, but if you time it correctly, you can really, really hurt some people off of discards. So not terrible, not first pick though. Uh, Demystify is an instant for one white, uh, destroy target enchantment. Very simple card, very sideboard card. Uh, this is not going to be good in the majority of the games that you're up against, but occasionally you'll find an enchantment that you'll want something like this for. 
So for that reason, I would say if I was in white, I would probably want one of these in my sideboard, at least one. But uh, I would never first pick a card like this. Uh, Robe of Mirrors is one blue for an enchant creature, and the enchanted creature has Shroud. I like this, weirdly, more than some of the enchantments, only because it gives Shroud, uh, which makes it very hard to kill. Unfortunately, that's kind of the only buff. Uh, it's really just win more, in the sense that you play this on your bomb and then hope it just doesn't get sweeped or something like that. I don't like this card in Limited at all. Uh, unfortunately, I just I would want a little bit more out of a buff, right? You want either a little bit more damage, some evasion, something like that. Yes, this does give Shroud, so it's not going to be able to get targeted by anything, but it doesn't actually buff it, and it makes it so you can't target it either, uh, which is a key difference between Shroud and Hexproof. Uh, so our first uncommon is Enormous Bayloth. It is a 7-7 seven, seven for 6 and a green. It is a vanilla beater. Uh, this card actually doesn't seem bad in the top end of green. Again, this is a core set, uh, so cards are going to be a little bit more simplified, a little more basic. Uh, a 7-7 seven, seven for 7 is on curve, and it is a great top end, so I will consider that. Uh, Spellbook, zero cost artifact, you have no maximum hand size. I don't like this card in limited. This is much more of a constructed card where you can kind of build around it a little bit, uh, so for that reason, I would not pick it. Uh, Persuasion is 3 and 2 blue for an enchant creature. You control the enchanted creature. This is actually an enchant creature that I love. So this so far actually beats out everything else for me. Uh, the reason I like this is because instead of making it a 2 for 1 on your own creatures, they're going to have to spend removal on their creature. And you can wait to pick whichever creature you want from them. Uh, hopefully a big bomb, but you can also time it so that hopefully they don't have too many cards in their hand to actually deal with it. Uh, this can very quickly take over a game. This is a blue bomb on its own, uh, and so for that reason, I definitely like picking it. And hey, there we go. Uh, sitting at the top of the list, we found a Crucible of Worlds. So uh, this is a three-cost artifact. You may play lands from your graveyard. A fantastic card. This is awesome. Uh, not in limited. Not that great in limited, but uh, definitely for constructed is great. I do not want to pick it here. Uh, but I'm super happy that I got that. I think pretty quick or pretty easily Persuasion is going to be my first pick. This card is powerful. It's a great blue bomb. Uh, and you basically just get to steal stuff from your opponent. And that always feels good. So that's going to be my pick. Uh, Crucible of Worlds is literally the best possible card we could have pulled out of this. So I'm stoked about that. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. We've got tons of it coming out every single week, at least five or six episodes, or excuse me, videos every week. Uh, so hopefully you guys are enjoying that. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next Crack-A-Pack video.